um, there, are, there are theories, right, again, psychological theories, that where we place our focus is extremely important, right? It's, it's sort of that glass half full or half empty. Is it, is it wonderful that we're getting all this rain or, gosh, it's raining again, right? The whole idea is where are we placing our focus? And David, in Psalms, right, about, what, 4,000 years ago, said, oh, you know what, I'm so down, I'm depressed, I'm, you know, and hey, he was the king, he had a lot going well for him, but even still, he was stressed out, he was down, he was in dumps, and he goes, oh, I know what I gotta do, I have to take my eyes off all these problems and put them on God, right? Soon I'll be feeling good, soon I'll be praising again. All right, what are some of the healthy responses to stress? So I'm gonna go through these and then I'm gonna talk about them a little bit. Support. Compliments, optimism, respiration, and energy. So again, our little acronym so that you can remember these healthy responses is SCORE. Yes, thank you. Jesus says, are you tired, worn out? Come to me. Right Now, replace stress. Are you stressed? Are you afraid? Because that's what stress is. Stress is really fear. Right? If we know that everything is going to work out, if we know life's going to be well, we're going to have enough money when we retire, whatever it is, then we don't feel worn out, we don't feel stressed, we don't feel afraid. And he says, come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. So trips to Paris don't relieve our stress. In fact, normally trips don't do that. I, every time I go out on a trip, I spend about the first week before I leave feeling stressed out. But he says, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Am I blocking the screen completely for people here? It's okay? Okay. Paul reminds us it is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Long before we, we heard of Christ, he had his eye on us, had designs for each of us for glorious living. So if we're living a, as a response to stress, stressed out lives, right? If stress is a response to all the things going on in our life, again, that is not glorious living. That is not what we are designed to have. All right, support. The New England Journal of Medicine. Now what this article did, what this research study is, they looked at what support does for stress and, and our res body's response to support. And what they looked at is they, they, they uh, in an experiment, they, they watched mothers who were in labor, right? And they had all the medical means available to support them and everything else. And then it, in the experimental group, the 40 mothers, right, in the experimental group, they gave an untrained helper to be with the woman when she came through the door, just to be with her, just to talk, to touch, to rub her shoulders, offer encouraging words. And what they found with just this, versus the mothers who just had the doctors and the medicine helping them, is that their length of labor, right, the mean time from admission to observation ward until delivery for the 40 mother infant pairs retained in the study was 19.3 hours for the control group and 8.7 hours for the experimental group. So given that support, they cut their labor time in half. Just having somebody to offer some encouragement. Now, all you mothers are going, well, why didn't somebody tell me this before, right? <laughs> So support is huge, right? We start seeing how just support go, you mean we can cut labor in half? Our body has this kind of response just with some support? And this isn't trained support, by the way. These are just untrained helpers. Type A behavior in your heart. This was one of the first books that looked at that type A personality. Cardiac prone uh, men and women, mostly men, but more and more we see women, right? And basically what they came up with is their, their whole idea at the end of it was what they found is that people who are suffering with this high anxiety, this stress level, 
that if they sought out help, rather than just relying on themselves, oh, I'm a tough guy, I'll do this all by myself. It's just me, me and myself. Well, that's two, right? No, if they said, hey, I'm really struggling here, you know, Penelope, can you help me out? Men who did this, women who did this, actually, they lowered their cholesterol level. So, giving support, now what's interesting is subsequent studies have shown that giving support has about the same benefit as asking for support. So it's really about the relationship. When we isolate, we feel much worse. The stress stays with us, the fears stay with us. Right? Now, I used to be a cop before I was a therapist and before that I was an actor and stuntman and now I'm a rock and roller and, you know, <laughs> my wife goes, please, just stop recreating your life job, sir. Right? But I'll tell you, when I was a cop, it was, well, it was, it was fun. I'm glad I'm doing something different now, but I had a lot of fun doing it. But I'll tell you, in those times where it was kind of scary, like people were literally threatening to kill you and had the capacity to do it, and you were there all alone going, oh man, I really don't want to shoot this guy right now, but I really don't want to die. And you heard that siren coming in the background, you know, that helper, whoever it was. You just went, <sighs> right? That person coming for us, whether, whatever that stress thing is for you, is so important. And yet we have a tendency when we're afraid or stressed to isolate, and that is not how God designed us. Journaling has also been found uh, to be very effective as a way to reduce our stress. A lot of studies on this. The only important part of the journaling is not to just say, you know, I paid $4.35 for gas today, is to talk about the emotional part of your life. To get the stress out, what is it that's hurting you? What is it that you're afraid of? Right? Write it. Now, the other interesting thing, and they said, you know, about 15 minutes a day is, is enough. It actually increases our immune functioning, right? It actually creates a healthier response in the body. And if anybody says, oh, I know why, don't believe them. Because the brain is the most unbelievable creation in the universe, right? That's created by God. We don't know, you know, we know certain chemicals are released and everything else, but it's still a mystery, you know, how thoughts come and everything else. But we, we look at what does help, and it does increase the immune functioning. Uh, suggestion for journaling, if that's something that you choose to do rather than reaching out to somebody, because some people go, I just can't do it. I'm just not there, I can't share my story, I can't, right? Okay, hopefully someday you get to that point, but at least start with writing it, getting it out. Pray about it. Write your prayers. Bring God into the stress. Bring God into the relationship. Uh, burn the pages afterwards. And the reason being is you don't want to go back at, you know, six months later going, oh, Joe told me to journal every day and I've been doing that and I've been reaching out for stress. What was I thinking about six months ago? And you start flipping through those pages and you go, oh, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> right? And it all comes back. So literally, get rid of the pages after you do it. Right? Flush them, burn them, whatever else. All right, a quick exercise. Now, when I say quick, I mean it. We're going to do this like one minute or we'll never get out of here tonight. So, quick exercise. If you didn't come with somebody, just turn to a stranger next to you or if you got a pair up in threes, this is fine. But I want you to talk. Everybody say this. Who do I turn to for support? And what kind of support do I ask for? There's many different kinds of support, okay? But I want you to just ask this question. Who do I turn to? Say that to your partner, say that to the stranger next to you, whoever it is. One minute, ready, go. <laughs> Did you have somebody in mind? Did anybody go, gee, no, I actually don't go to somebody for support. Did you feel like you had somebody? Yes. Right. Are you clear on what kind of support you're looking for from this person? This is really important because very often, right, stereotypically, men are fixers, right? Somebody comes and says, hey, Joe, I got a problem. Here's what you do. 
first do this, then do that, right? We just want to solve the problem, stereotypically, right? But there's many, the reality is there's lots of different kinds of support. There is that. Let me give you some advice, and sometimes we're looking for advice, right? I asked Penelope before I started, do I have cords hanging out of my, you know, do I look goofy? No, let me fix you, right? So I wanted that. Sometimes we just want to be heard. I got to tell you, as a therapist, that's a lot of what I do. Not just sitting there going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but really understanding somebody's story. How do you do that? By listening, by asking questions about it, right? So important. Do we have people that we go to and ask for prayer? Do we have people in our life who we know we can trust to say, no, that's stupid what you're doing. Why are you doing that? Right? I value those people a lot in my life. What other kinds of support? There's tons of kinds of support, but I encourage you to think about what it is you're looking for. Because if you're just looking to your spouse, which hopefully that's the first person you're looking to for support, but I also say make sure you've got a list of people. Because typically some people are really good at this kind of support, but not this. But not this. So identify people with certain strengths, different kinds of support. And also think about what you're doing. If you're Mr. Fixer, maybe that's not what that person needs. And I'll tell you, probably, men, I'll give you a clue. Women, plug your ears for a second. Probably that's not what your wives want is for you to fix their problems. That's true. Okay, women, you can unplug. They probably want to just be heard more than anything. Any questions on that? If you have any questions as we go along, just say, Joe! Okay. What happens when we turn to God for support in times of distress? Well, the distress brings you to God, not drives you from Him. It turns us around. It gets us back in the way of salvation. Again, this is Paul addressing the Corinthians. Right? Life was stressful even back then. Right? Paul knew about stress, I think. But again, it doesn't have to drive us away from God, but it will unless we turn to Him. Unless we turn to Him with our fears, that's what's going to happen. Compliments and appreciation. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a dank cellar. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you will have. So again, sometimes this takes training. This takes like, well wait, how am I seeing? What am I looking at in life? Am I seeing how beautiful a place this is that we live in? Are we, are we relishing the rain when it rains and the sun when it suns? Are we loving the person that we're in with? Right? That's the whole idea. So how do we do this? Well, one of the things that we do is we offer compliments. Right? Now we're going to look at what compliments and what the research says about it. This is an older study, but the statistics are still very similar. Right? It looked at death rates of widowed and married females per 100,000, right? So this was the calamity, right, that they experienced, whether it was heart disease, cancer, strokes, motor vehicle accidents, psoriasis, suicide, accidents, fires, whatever it was, what they found is that, and I know this says white females and non-white females, it's gonna be the same, there's gonna be, what you know, uh, but if they were married, they were more likely to be alive versus if they were widowed. So this is like the death rates. This is the if they were married, right? Did they succumb or not? So in some of these cases, like accidental fires or explosions, if they were widowed, right, they were sometimes six times more likely to die. Same thing when we looked at males. Right? In some of these cases, whether it was heart disease or uh, whatever it is, married people seem to survive these calamities better than unmarried or divorced people. Now, there is a caveat. 
And I actually brought this up in my marriage talk the other night, and I just put this slide in today. I said, why don't I talk about this in my stress thing? Because being married is good, right? Being in relationship is good, but it's way better if your marriage is happy. It's way better for your health and your life. A more recent study found people who are happily married live longer, healthier lives than those who are divorced or unhappily married. The study found that unhappily married couples are 35% more likely to get sick. Divorce and unhappy marriages can shorten your life by four years. So it's not just about staying in a miserable relationship. It's about improving that relationship. Improving that relationship improves your own health. So if you need any further motivation besides just being miserable, well, I feel like living four years longer. I better work on this marriage. There's your motivation right there. <laughs> now, those of you who say, well, Joe, I just never married. I'm not interested in it. Well, another study showed that people who even had, right, they had these massive heart attacks and then they did a follow-up. Who was still alive a year later and who had died? And what they found is that people who went home to pets, in some cases, were like five times more likely to be alive at the end of one year versus if they went home alone. So isolate, and you see this in hospitals now too, the value of pets, you know, they have all these programs where they bring dogs in to visit people and stuff. It's huge, right? The whole idea, it's not just the magic dog or something like that, is we were designed to be in relationship. Now, I don't think the dog is the best relationship. Uh, sometimes it might feel that way. <laughs> but if a relationship with a dog, however, can do this, help to keep us alive, what could a well-developed relationship with God do? Right? Could it make us holy? Well, Peter says, let yourself be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy, you be holy. So he doesn't just invite us in. It's kind of like, do it, right? We're called to be holy. And it's the relationship with God that does this. Again, developing our spiritual life, developing our relationship with God, because everything I've been talking about is relationship, how our relationship with your spouse, our relationship with your dog, how this improves our immune functioning, it keeps us alive. Well, if that's the case, then what does a relationship with God do to our health? Now, I don't have these slides in here, but I've, I've done research, I haven't done the research studies, I've read the research studies, that actually say that people who are religious, not spiritual, right? People who are religious, meaning they go to a church. Now, it doesn't matter if it's Catholic or non-denominational Christian or temple or whatever else, but people who go to a church generally are happier. They have better impulse control. So there is something to be said about community, about joining together in worship and developing our relationship for God. Another interesting book, In Search of Excellence. Now this book looked at uh, good companies. What, what makes a good company great? Why do we want to work for them? Well, I'll cut to the chase so you don't have to read the book. It says the systems and the excellent companies are not only designed to produce lots of winners, they're constructed to celebrate the winning once it occurs. Their systems make extraordinary use of non-monetary incentives. They're full of hoopla. So the whole idea in this is, is that we have to work and focus on creating hoopla, if you will, in our own lives. Celebrate the winning in your relationships, whether it's your spouses or your friends or your co-workers, celebrate the winning, right? This is what makes us happy. And it not only makes us happy, it makes the company that we work for successful. Because the companies that did this, right, generally were described as the excellent companies to work for. Okay, I, I'm not gonna get too far in the business thing here. But again, another book, Compliments. Treat people as adults, treat them with partners, treat them with dignity, treat them with respect, treat them, not the capital spending and automation, as the primary source of productivity and gains. 
right? We have to treat each other as the most important asset in our lives. This is what develops and promotes prosperity, it promotes health, it promotes spiritual and physical well-being. We have to develop these relationships. It's such an important part to building our immunity to stress. All right, expressing, appreci expressing appreciation is beneficial for the giver as well as the receiver. All right, these are just some ways that you can do it. Now, of course, this is like, I made this slide a year or so ago. Now we'd say, we'd tweet a, a message, I guess, to somebody or whatever we do. I'm gonna text you a compliment. <laughs> All right, compliments. Another exercise. What I like, admire about you is. Now, this is so important. I didn't say it, right? I'm still, uh, one, one, trust me. She said, don't say, trust me, trust me on this. I'm gonna kill you if you do that. I've done three. Three, okay. Okay, my limit's five. I won't do that anymore. Believe me, that's different than trust me, right? Okay, so what is your name? Carm. Carm? Okay. Now, I don't know Carm, right? But Carm, you know what I love? As you came here, you sat in the very front row, wearing a bright yellow shirt, so you know I'd see you, right? You laughed, you joked with me, you pay attention, you look at me, you make me feel good about what I'm doing. Thank you for coming tonight. You're welcome, and I'm loving it. Thank you. Now, I just offered Carm a sincere compliment, correct? So we don't have to know people really well to do this. But let me ask you, Carm, how did it feel? Wonderful. This is a skill we have to cultivate and practice and make a part of our daily lives. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to turn to your partner or your group, whoever you are with, and I want you to give them a compliment. Turn it around. One minute. Ready to go. About 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, engines. And all right, we're back. So, what was your experience of that? Uh, okay, now let me ask a more difficult question. For anybody getting the compliment, was it difficult? Yes, there, I, 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 heard, I saw some heads and I heard some, yes, it was difficult. So it, it's not only important to develop this skill to give compliments because again, this helps us, okay? It helps them and it helps us. But if it was difficult, right, then I suggest you work on that. Because what happens when we don't take in somebody's compliment? Oh, Joe, it was really great talk tonight. Nah. <laughs> well, that's the last time I'm going to hear from that person, right? 
Now, I, I've been, you know, some people go, oh, that was really one of, I'm really good, and, and you know, I used, to, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot better at this now, but I had to work on it, trust me. I used to go, oh. <laughs> Okay, four. I've got one more, and I'm not going to say it. I believe I'm not. That doesn't count, right? So work on this skill, because I'm telling you, for a lot of people, it's more difficult to receive that compliment. But we shut people out of our lives when we do that, when we don't take in their compliments. Because what, would you say, what we're basically saying is, you don't know what you're talking about. Joe, that was great. No. What I'm saying is, your opinion doesn't matter. So don't do that to each other. Practice saying yes. Practice saying thank you. Whatever it is, practice doing it and it'll become easier. Again, when you're giving compliments, be specific, be detailed, be enthusiastic. Don't just say, oh, great dinner, honey. Well, what was great about it? <laughs> A more difficult exercise. <laughs> what I like about myself. You know what? Several times in my life, I was in a career that for whatever reason I faced and I thought, you know what, this isn't working for me right now. And it took a lot of hard work and a lot of courage and perseverance on my part to make that change. But each time I not only did it, I found a way to thrive. I found a way to be successful at it, a way to find joy in what I was doing. I'm so happy that I've been able to do that, that I've taken that courageous move and stand. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, thank you. Now, So, why is it important to do this, or to be able to do this? And I'm not talking about being boastful, right? I never said, I'm the best therapist ever. I'm a terrific rock and roller, Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> right? No, I'm not, it's, it's just recognizing what? The gift that God gave me. I'm not bragging about myself. If I, if I was courageous, it's because God gave me courage. If I have, if I have smarts, because God gave me smarts, whatever it is. Now, I took the gifts and I did something with it, but why is it important for us to be able to do this? Okay, you get a free CD if you answer correctly. <laughs> yes? Because everything we do, we do it to glorify God. Well, that's a wonderful answer. Wasn't the one I was looking for, but you still get a free CD on your way out. Because <laughs> that was great. Yes? You love yourself, it's easier to love. Yeah, great. When you love yourself, it's easier to love others. It's hard to give that love that we don't already feel for ourselves. Another great answer, not the one I was looking for. But you still get a CD. I'm just kidding. No, that's a wonderful answer. These are actually all right. Let me cut to the chase. It's because sometimes, and I said this in the marriage talk too, a week ago, sometimes our partner, our friend, when we're looking for that support, they're not there to say, hey, Sakura, great job, man. Good work. So we have to be able to see it ourselves. We have to learn to take in what God sees in us. Again, we're his most magnificent creation, right? That's what scripture says. And we have to recognize it. And we have to say, hey, this is wonderful. God gave me this opportunity to do it, and I took it, and I did it. We don't always have somebody around to do it for us. That's why it's so important. But you get a free CD, too. Just take it on the way out. <laughs> So, one minute exercise, get in your group, and I want you to have this experience. Compliment yourself. Ready, go. <laughs>
20 seconds. Enjoying this exercise, that's good. Nobody wants to stop. Okay, so did you did everybody get a chance to do that? Who is willing to do that? And let me just ask you, what was that like for you? It's hard. Somebody said great, felt great. Good. Uh, it's really important, and again, it's not about becoming an egotistical, maniacal, you know, it's like, oh, I'm wonderful. No, it's really about just seeing the beauty of who you are and giving yourself that compliment. Because when we're down, when we're stressed, when we're not feeling like what we want to feel, that is going to help us. That's what the research says. It's not just what Joe says. Optimism. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about this, although it's really, really important. Um, there are more books written on optimism out there in the self-help sections than, you know, than I'm, I can do justice to. But optimism is really about what we say to ourselves when life is difficult. Right? Optimism isn't, oh, I just got that promotion. Oh, isn't that great? I must be really good. No, it's really that self-talk. -talk. It's when, you know, our partner just really disappointed us, when we just lost that job, when we, you know, crashed the car or whatever it is, and we go, what do we say? What do we say to ourselves? Again, it's a really important skill because our perception of life is going to form how we feel. What we say, what we believe, what we see is going to impact our feelings. So there's a thought, brain cortex, goes to the feeling, midbrain. Does that make sense? We have to develop this. Some people are naturally optimistic. I'm probably more naturally optimistic. But I've got to tell you, I've had challenges in my life where I said, okay, nature is not enough. I've got to practice this. So I do. I do work at seeing the glass half full. I do look and, and try to take it in and, and be appreciative of seeing the hope, the belief. Because if you can't believe it, if you can't hope about it, chances are it's not going to happen. So this is one of my favorite exercises. Is rejection painful? Right? I'm talking about optimism. Everybody's going, yes, rejection is painful. Does anybody say rejection is not painful? Does everybody say rejection is painful? Everybody. You're all wrong. You're wrong. Okay? And, and I'm... Oh, you crossed your fingers? That doesn't count. Okay. So, I'm going to prove it. Okay? Uh, what is your name again? Joan. Joan? Joan. Okay. Now, Joan's here with her husband, and I'm, my wife's back at home right now, but we're both happily married, I know, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but let's see if rejection's painful. Let's just pretend, Joan, you and I work at the same company, right? And we're both single, and one night... At, towards the end of work, I finally build up my courage. I'm tired of being alone. And I go, oh, gosh. Uh. Joan, you know, I've, I've admired you for so long from the cubicle over there. And uh, <laughs> you're so smart and witty and funny. And I, I'm just wondering if you'd go out with me Friday night. And Joan looks at me with that beautiful smile. And she goes, I'd love to, Joe, but Friday night I'm flossing. <laughs> And I walk away and I go, oh, well, you're such an idiot, of course. Well, of course you wouldn't want to go with you. I mean, you're stupid, you got dumb looking hair, you're always wearing like black and white, nothing's very creative about you. You haven't had a promotion in forever. Now, is that painful? Okay, take two. I see Joan from 
several cubicles away. You know, Joan, I'm wondering, I, I've admired you for a long time, and I'm just, well, I'm wondering if you'd go out with me Friday night. She again looks at me and smiles and says, you know, Joe, I'd love to, but Friday night I have to floss. <laughs> Same response. But this time I say, hey, you know what? Maybe it's not the right person. I bet there's a person here that would see me as wonderful and funny and creative and smart. And You know what? That's the person that God has for me. That's, that's the person I'm going to date Friday night, eventually. Right? Now, is that painful? So is rejection painful or is it what we say to ourselves that's painful? It's what we say to ourselves. That's optimism. That's self-talk. And again, I'm not talking about deluding yourself. You know, it's not like, well, when I'm six foot three, I'm really going to be... Oh, I'm 5'10", that's it, right? But it's about seeing the beauty of who you are as made by God. God didn't make junk, right? We're his most wonderful creation. When we see that, when we believe that, that's as the world calls it, calls it as optimism. I, or you could just call it faith, belief, too. What do we fear about ourselves? What are we saying to ourselves when rejected? Well, God says, don't love the world's ways. Don't look for everybody to tell you how you should feel about yourself. Love of the world squeezes out love of the Father. And the spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. God is love, and we live in God, and God lives in us. There is no room in love for fear or stress. You can interchange fear and stress. Well-formed love banishes fear. Fear, or stress, is crippling. What happens when we live God's way? We begin to see life and people differently. Again, optimistically, hopefully. We develop a willingness to stick with things and a sense of compassion in the heart and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Again, when we begin to see people differently, when we begin to see God in them, God in ourselves, we live and feel differently. Our body responds to this, right? I could freak myself out if I, if I was a great storyteller and could tell stories, scary stories, right? I could maybe make some of you afraid about certain things, right? And what happens when we're afraid? Our heart races, we get nervous, even if we're sitting in this room and I tell a really scary story, right? Well, there's no monsters here, but if you believed it, right? Belief is a powerful thing. Then your body has a response to it. We have a physiological response to what we believe. What does belief in God do? What does our development of faith do to our body, right? I can think right now, if I sat down and I thought about some nerve-wracking, difficult time in my life, and I just closed my eyes, Everything, my, my hands would start to sweat, I'd start to perspire, right? The brain doesn't know, which is a gift, too, because if, we're, if we can trick the brain just with a belief, with a story, then we can also send it a different message. We can give it a different belief. We can say, hey, you're wonderful. Life is okay. We're going to be provided for. Why am I worrying? If we believe that, we will have a different physiological response. Does that make sense? Can you give me an amen? amen. I love doing that. <laughs> I should have been a Baptist preacher. Can you say amen? <laughs> Respiration. Breathing is the accelerator pedal of the body. Uh, controlled breathing. Inhale and exhale slowly for five to six seconds turns off the stress response. Breathing is the simplest thing in the world we can do to shut off that stress response, that fight or flight response. Why? Remember, when we get stressed off, what do we start doing? We start breathing deep and heavy and fast. Why? 
because we got to run, we got to flee, or we got to fight. The body prepares for it. So we can control our breathing. So when we breathe deeply and slowly, what are we doing? We're sending a message, again, to the amygdala that says, relax, you're not about to die. Calm down. If you did that right now, and you just breathe deeply a few times, your body responds to it. Right? If you want to hyperventilate, do it. Think about stress things. Your body responds to it. Breathing's the simplest thing we can do. Maybe you can't go to the yoga class. Maybe you don't have time to go for a run. Maybe all your friends have turned off their phones and you can't talk to them for support. What can you do? You can breathe. You got to do it anyway. You might as well slow it down and enjoy it. <laughs> Yawning is interesting. Yawning, we get the same response. I kind of like this. You know, it, it's a way to actually, if you see people are nervous and they sometimes go, <sighs> they're not bored the body's trying to get the oxygen to relax. Now, I don't encourage you to do this if you're going into a meeting with the boss and you're kind of nervous. <laughs> really? Yeah. Energy, and I'm, I'm going to go through this quickly. Yes, a question. What about um, praying? What about praying? I exactly the same thing. If, if we're praying and we're slowing down a, a meditative kind of prayer, right? Penelope, you talk about centering prayer. I don't really know that much about it. But whatever that prayer is for you where you just start to relax and feel God's presence, you know, I do that for, for me. If I don't do that every day in the morning for at least a half an hour, 45 minutes. Of course, I have my cup of coffee, so it's kind of fun, too. But life does not go well for me. It, that day is going to be disastrous, right? Now, I don't know what it is or when it is for you, but prayer is the same thing. That's what I do, is pray, right? Clearly, this whole thing, all of these scriptures that I've gone through so far, talk about just that. It's about coming to me, coming to God, right? Developing that relationship with God. That's prayer. However you do that, if it's through scripture, if it's going to mass, if it's whatever that is. So, good question. And yes, prayer is the, is the same thing. It's about developing that relationship, that calm, that peace, right? If we're trusting, right, and I read these, I read sometimes the same verses over and over every day because I have to, right? Trust, believe, I'm for you, I'm with you. Who can be against you, right? I just go, okay, right? It allows me to breathe deeply. Uh, the Greek word for health was physics, which meant the healing force within. Uh, the Ultradian cycle, 90 to 120 minutes of focus, concentration, then the body needs a five minute break. So all the research for people who like to work really hard, go, I sat at my desk for five hours straight. Well, don't. You're not doing anybody a favor. Actually, for all of us, the body has this cycle, the Ultradian cycle. And for, you know, 60, 90 minutes, we have to have a break, a disengagement from what we're doing. Otherwise, we, our functioning goes way down. You know, whatever the break is for you, um, it can be very simple, it can be very short, but it's very important. So if you're a person that experiences a lot of workplace stress, do yourself a favor. Get out and walk up and down the steps twice and do it every 90 minutes. It's gonna have a huge impact on your health. You got to have that break. That's just how God designed us. Again, doing one task at a time. When we're stressed, when I'm stressed, I'm going, oh my gosh, I got to do this. Oh wow, I didn't shine my computer. <laughs> or this. Right? And then all of a sudden I'm going, I better mop the floor. And then, yeah, so that's what stress does, right? We start doing all these things and not accomplishing anything well. Sleep, nutrition, exercise, again, if we're not doing the things as designed by God that we're supposed to be doing, if we're not getting the sleep we need, if we're not taking care of the body, Scripture actually talks about exercise being profitable for us, um, if we're not eating correctly, then we're not going to have the energy, that we're not going to have the ability to, uh, to deal with stress, to deal with life when it's difficult. 
Finally, kind of in, in closing here, and then we can have some questions if you have any. The Tabernacle Choir, which voice will give you more energy? Again, this is something that we have to practice. For some people it comes naturally, other people we have to work on it a little harder. But again, we're stuck in traffic. We can choose to sit there and go, oh, traffic, LA, why do I live in LA? This is a stupid place to live, right? There's Six million people, 12 billion cars, every day, right? Well, what does that do to you? Stresses us out. You're gonna sit in traffic anyway, right? Well, you know what? This is a time to listen to all this great music on my radio, and wow, look at, what a beautiful day, Southern California. I can't believe it's 40 below in Minnesota right now, and it's, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. This is the Tabernacle Choir voice. This is the voice that we've got to develop inside our head. This is the voice that says, relax, it's okay. Trust me, right? Your life is in my care. Right? We have to practice this. It doesn't necessarily com come naturally. A couple more suggestions from God. Make up your minds not to worry. It's a decision. Every detail of your body and soul is in my care. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness will come and settle you down. You're asking about prayer, right? Trust in me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties. But take heart, I've conquered the world. So... I'm just going to put these up if you wanted a, a brief recap. Again, support. Who do we go to? What kind of support are we looking for? Are we offering it to somebody? Remember, giving support has the same value as receiving support. Compliments. Compliment yourself. Compliment somebody else. Be enthusiastic in it. Ask each day, what can I show, how can I show appreciation for somebody? How can I show appreciation for life? How can I show appreciation to God? By giving thanks, by giving praise, right? Each day, moments. Take a few seconds, thank you God for this. Optimism, practice that voice. It's so important. Remember, rejection doesn't hurt us. What do we say about it? The stock market going down doesn't hurt us. Everybody's going, what, are you kidding me? <laughs> right? What we say about it. Oh, my retirement is gone. Oh, it's terrible. I'm not going to eat everything I work. Or we go, well, you know, this is life. It's going to come back. That's that tabernacle choir voice. Energy, taking the break. So anyway, this is me. Thank you. That's it, except for questions and possible answers. <laughs> Um, I just want to say, for those of you who uh, don't know me as well, to my, my ministry, Call and Song Ministries, if you belong to a church and you want to uh, have me come in for a talk or a concert, so just call me. The card is in the back. There's CDs in the back. And I have two new music videos out uh, on YouTube, for those of you who are savvy enough to get on YouTube. I just learned. Um, if you type in my name, you can see those. That's, that shows a little bit my ministry and why I do what I do. But are there any questions about stress or anything else? Yes. Yeah, what do we do when we go to bed and we can't shut it all off? Well, a couple things. One, uh, just on a practical, you know, our body changes. You want to look at things like caffeine in the later part of the day. Uh, exercise every day if you're not getting that. Don't do things like watch the news at night. <laughs> you know, we have to shut down slowly. We're not a light switch. We've got to learn how to shut it down. So after dinner, start shutting it down. That, that may or may not involve watching TV. 
but do things that lower the sort of that stress response you know I don't do bills at night I don't talk about finances at night that always stresses me out those are just some of my rules you know so yeah it's a, it's a great question it's not an easy answer but you just have to start shutting down earlier yeah anything else you're welcome to come up too if you want to get out of here you can you're free to leave yes sir uh, I was working in a very stressful job and uh, something clicked in my mind to prepare myself for the stress and I started saying the rosary which I had in my pocket for 30 years the rosary yeah probably never touched the rosary but I had it in a little case in my pocket then I developed saying the rosary on my way to work yeah and I felt like when I got out of the car I didn't care what happened I was prepared yeah so his response was saying the rosary on the way to work that's a beautiful response too so thank you for sharing that and I agree all right thank you very much I'm here if you want to come up or ask anything thank you